Welcome back to our continuing examination of the text of the Gospel of Matthew. We find ourselves here in just one verse, and I'm going to be reading from the American Standard Version. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 54. Let's show it. Let's see if I can. Verse 54 says this. Now the centurion and they were, that were with him watching Jesus when they saw the earthquake and the things that were done feared exceedingly saying truly this was the Son of God. In the world of advertising there is a, a form of advertising a type of advertising. I'm not, I'm not an advertising person but Kind of the way I see it is this. There's a type of advertising that involves getting a pitch person, a pitchman, a pitch woman, a person who will speak of your product. And what you try to do is get somebody who you feel can help aid the image of that product, as it were, so that they are not just promoting the product, but they providing an identity that works with your product. Now, one of the more famous pitchmen I can recall in terms of advertising was Dan Marino. Dan Marino was a quarterback for the Miami Dolphins of the National Football League. And in the early 19, or the late 1980s, he w was a pitchman for a company that was selling gloves. Now, if you understand football, you understand that a quarterback stands before behind the offensive line. And basically in simple non-technical terms, what the offensive line ensures is that the quarterback doesn't get massacred by the defensive unit facing the other side of the football. And so his pitch was that about taking care of the hands that take care of you. And so you have this image of, of course, football players and these fancy schmancy gloves. It was a very effective ad. It was kind of a counterintuitive. I guess you could also say it was a little tongue-in-cheek. In about the same era, not necessarily the same time, you had James Garner. James Garner in his day was a movie actor, television actor of some note, of some stature, and of stand some standing. And he was a pitch person for the beef industry, to be inexact. I'm not sure the exact organization he was doing, but it was the promotion of the beef industry in the United States. And on one level, James Garner was a fit because of his image as an actor. He had just a certain toughness that kind of just fitted the beef industry. The problem, of course, was that he would eventually have quadruple bypass heart surgery. And in this era, it was just kind of the wrong fit to have somebody promote beef who obviously been eating way too much fatty meat. You know, the image was not consistent. So when you look at pitching a product, you, you could say this, you get the wrong person, it will not work. But if you get the right person with the right image, your product will sell. In verse 54 of Matthew chapter 27, we have one person's testimonial of what he experienced on the crucifixion scene. He was a part of the Roman military. He was probably a person who had seen and experienced the seedier side of life. This was probably not the first crucifixion he was involved in. He was probably also a Gentile with no sympathies for the Jewish faith. He was not the person you would expect to be used for the endorsement of who Jesus was. Yet, it is he who we have record of. We do not have the religious establishment giving a testimonial. We do not even have a direct statement from the apostles as to what they thought was happening. Now, when that is said, recognize that Matthew was an apostle and recording the events of the crucifixion. 
but we don't actually have Matthew's own testimonial of what happened. Yet out of all the possible witnesses to that actual crucifixion, that moment in time, we just have this Roman soldier. Now, when we read that, the question then becomes, what does he mean when he says, surely he was the Son of God? And I think this is very, very important to understand this text, is to get a sense of what did he mean. In order to understand that question, we have to grasp what this man's background. If he was Jewish, we would expect a meaning consistent with the teaching of the Old Testament. I think that would be a fair assessment. The fact that he was a part of the Roman military makes it more likely, though, that he was Gentile. And it seems that the troops here were Roman troops through and through, and in that sense, non-Jewish troops. And therefore, when he uses the phrase Son of God, we, I think we would have to say we have to understand it in a Greco-Roman context, in the context of Greco-Roman religion. That would, to me, be the fair assessment. In that tradition, it was believed and it was felt that the gods did come down to earth among people. Think of one of the stories in the book of Acts of Paul and Barnabas. They are mugged and seen as the gods. The gods have come down to us. And so that's probably the context that we're looking at. There is a sense in Greco-Roman belief system that the gods do actually come down to earth and are amongst us at times. And is therefore likely, while the statement was sincere, don't misunderstand me, it was sincere and real, it was more than likely very inadequate. Now, that's not a problem per se. We all have to start somewhere. Yet, this man clearly, clearly was moving in the right direction. And, of course, the question then that follows out of this is why this statement was recorded. Let's have some conjecture. It was recorded because it was felt to be significant. Yes, that's true. And it was significant. Why? Because maybe it led this person to become a believer in Jesus Christ and share his story. Conjecture, conjecture, and more conjecture. But that seems a fair thing. The endorsement of the Christian faith is never strengthened by the stars of our culture. I've been in the church, you know, 40 years now, and we do love it when a celebrity comes to Jesus in the evangelical church. We will use that person and going, oh, look at this, this person has come to faith. I don't think celebrity endorsements help the faith at all. We don't need those. We need the people like this centurion come to a faith experience eventually, probably. A person who saw something in Jesus and it's real. Yet, we come back to this person who brought nothing to his endorsement. It's interesting, right? Because when you look at it in terms of a pitch man, this is not a person who brought anything to the Christian faith and the Christian movement. And yet, there is something real, legitimate, and actual about a testimony. All we know is that this grisly veteran of the Roman way of doing things saw something that day that, I, that he had not seen before. He articulated what he saw as best he could, and yet the meaning of those actual words probably fell short. Again, God starts where we are, not expecting us to start where we need to. It is funny that in the midst of the promised land, it is the non-Jew who saw God at work at the cross. 